In today's video, we'll be looking at 10 of the richest Muslim women in the world. Welcome back to another episode of FTD Facts, where we post videos daily exploring the interesting world we live in. I'm Sarah Carvalho, and I'm excited to be here taking you through the facts. In today's episode, we're looking at 10 of the richest Muslim women in the world, starting from the lower end of net worth and working our way up to the highest. And trust me, this list is quite impressive. You'll want to hear about all 10. All right, our first lady takes us to Queen Rania of Jordan. Queen Rania is the queen consort of Jordan. She was born in Kuwait to a Palestinian family, but she later moved to Jordan for work. There, she met Prince Abdullah. Since being married to the now King of Jordan, she is quite well known for her advocacy work that supports education, health, community empowerment, youth, cross-cultural dialogue, and microfinance. In November 2000, she was recognized for her commitment to the causes of children and youth. UNICEF even invited Queen Rania to join its Global Leadership Initiative quite the accomplishment. There she worked amongst many other world leaders, including former South African President Nelson Mandela, in a global movement to improve the lives and well-being of children. She's also quite the social butterfly online. She maintains pages on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. Her net worth is 35 million. And that's the lowest one today. Moving on to our next wealthy lady, we have Sheikha Lubna Al Kazmi, the first woman to host a ministerial post in the United Arab Emirates. Al Kazmi has spent time with the Pope and has helped lead her country's humanitarian efforts. Educated in the U.S. England and Korea, she joined the UAE cabinet in 2004 as Minister of the Economy. Forbes magazine listed her as number 36 on the list of the world's power women in 2017. Her network is an estimated 90 million, quite a big jump from Queen Rania's 35 million. Next we have Princess Amira of Saudi Arabia. Princess Amira, or if you'd prefer to call her by her full name, and let's see if I can get this right. Princess Amira bint Aydin bin Nayef al Tawil al Utaib is a Saudi Arabian former princess and philanthropist born into a non royal cadet branch of the Saudi dynasty. She was raised in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, and at the young age of 18, she met Prince Al Walid bin Talal al Said a man 28 years older than her and, according to sources, her distant cousin. During the time of their marriage, she assumed the role of vice chairperson of the Al Walid bin Talal Foundation. Now, they were only married for a brief period of time, divorcing in 2013. Since that time, the princess supports many humanitarian interests in both Saudi Arabia and around the world. She has been awarded many achievements, but most notably in 2012 was the most high-profile newcomer to the CEO Middle East 100 Most Powerful Arab Women, listing fourth place in the ranking. Congrats! Her current husband is Khalifa bin Bouti al Mukhairi, chairman of KBBO Group, an Abu Dhabi-based group with investments in healthcare, money exchange, and retail, estimated to be worth $1.2 billion. What a woman and what a life she has lived. All right, let's talk about Princess Lala Salma of Morocco. Lala Salma, born Salma Benani, is the princess consort of Morocco. Lala completed her studies in engineering and worked as an information services engineer at ONA Group, the country's largest private holding company. She met her husband, King Mohammed VI, at a private party in 1999. She was known as a more low-profile princess, but still managed to stay a bit more public than her predecessors. She is an avid supporter of cancer associations and the Fez Sacred Music Festival. She also represented her now ex-husband in meetings and gatherings in various countries around the globe. Interestingly enough, she was actually the first wife of a Moroccan ruler to have been publicly acknowledged and given a royal title. It is said that after their divorce between late 2017 and early 2018, it was speculated that she had gone into hiding. 
Their net worth as a couple has been reported to be around $2.5 billion. All right, in our list of women, we have to talk about Sheikha Maita of Dubai. Full name, Sheikha Maita bint Mohammed bin Rashid Al Makroom, try saying that five times, <laughs> is a karate and taekwondo athlete and Sheikha of Dubai. She represented the UAE in the 2006 Asian Games, winning the silver medal at the women's over 60 kilogram karate event. She also competed in the Taekwondo 67 kg category for women in the 2008 Summer Olympics quite the athlete. And not only is she a talented athlete, but she also dubs the title of being number 17 on Forbes' magazine's list of 20 hottest young royals. Coming from money, her father alone has a net worth of about 4.5 billion. And yes, she's a part of that family money too. <laughs> what a lucky gal. All right, bringing us to our halfway point today. Fact number five, we've got Sheikha Moza of Qatar. All right, so Sheikha Moza comes from Doha, Qatar, born in 1959. She is the wife of Sheikh Hamid bin Khalifa Al Thani, former emir of the state of Qatar. The pair have five sons and two daughters together. Since 1959, in 1995, she has led educational and social reforms in Qatar and has founded national and international development projects. Unlike many monarchical wives in the Middle East, Moza is quite involved in her nation's politics and society, actively involved in the government. Now, something we found pretty incredible to learn about her is that she was listed as one of Forbes' 100 most powerful women, coming in at number 75. Her net worth is more than 7 billion euros. All right, up next we have Sheikha Hanadi of Qatar. Now, Sheikha Hanadi is what we would like to call a female powerhouse. An investor, real estate entrepreneur, and a banker. Her net worth alone is more than 15 billion. She is the founder and chairperson of Amwal, founder and CEO of Al Wab City Real Estate Development Project, vice chairman of Al Nasser bin Khalid Al Thani and Sons Group, and founding chairperson of Q Auto. Did we tire you out yet? Geez, that's an impressive resume. She started out her career as an assistant lecturer in economics at Qatar University, and boy has she come quite a long way since then. Good for you, Sheikha. All right, moving on down to Princess Fatima of Saudi Arabia. Once a royal princess, now officially a queen of Saudi Arabia, Fatima is wife of Sheikh Abdi Al Muhammad. She also belongs to one of the wealthiest Saudi Arabian royal families in the world. Most often, you'll see her quite covered and her full beauty is not shown, but many people believe that she very well may be one of the most beautiful women in the world. Her net worth is said to be around $18 billion. Coming in at number two, we have Princess Haja Hafiza Surul. Bolkai of Brunei. This princess is the daughter of one of the wealthiest men in the world. Her dad has a net worth of $20 billion. Hafiza has a degree in business administration and works as an officer at the finance ministry. She married Benjiran Haji Muhammad Ruzaini in September of 2012. Their wedding even made history for being one of the most lavish weddings in royal family history, especially being that it was in the more quiet country of Brunei. Britain's Queen Elizabeth even sent her best regards to the princess on the day of her wedding. I don't know about you, but I'd love for the queen to do that for me on my wedding day. Although I'm probably a couple billion short of having that honor. All right, and we've made it all the way down to number one, Princess Majida Bolkia. All right, tying with Princess Haja, Princess Majida Bolkia is the daughter of Brunei's Sultan and Prime Minister, Hassanal Bolkia. Known to be amongst the wealthiest individuals in the world with a net worth of $20 billion. Despite coming from so much money, Majida studied administration and public policy at the University of Brunei, Darussalam, and got an MA in environmental development from King's College, London. She is quite educated indeed. She began her career as a special duties officer at the environmental unit in the Ministry of Development, responsible for policy 
policy and strategic environmental affairs. She is also an avid writer and has written many environmentally focused papers. All right, friends, that brings us to the end of our list for today. What do you think? Do you think we should all get to working on catching up with these billionaires? I know I'm feeling some major competition brewing. <laughs> Thanks again to you all for watching today and for continuously supporting our channel. Let me know what you thought of today's video and don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to keep seeing more of our content. If you liked this video, we've got more for you linked down below in the description section. Well, that's all for today. Catch us next time right here on FTD Facts. Bye for now.